Have you ever thought to yourself, what would happen if I unalived all my townsfolk into area and looted their corpses for my benefit? Well, boy, do I have the video for you. I played Master Mode Terraria, but limited myself to only using the weapons that drop after my NPCs perish. There is a total of eight weapons that you can use in the whole game, and most of them suck. I hope you enjoy the video because, uh... I sure didn't. Also, I know Waffle Time did basically the same video. That was not planned. I recorded this playthrough four months ago, back in September, and it just reinforces that me and him are basically the same person. But before the video starts, guys, don't forget to use code CDEATHBOT at GamersUps.GG for 10% off a fantastic energy drink formula that is cost efficient and for gamers. That's you. It's the easiest way to support me and also get some great products. They do have a caffeine free option, which maintains its tastiness and is still way more cost efficient than your generic sodas. It's literally 40 cents per serving. It's insane. Because some of my audience is under 18, the link in the description will take you straight to the caffeine free products just in case. Now back to the video. So we start off a world as anyone does, cut down some trees, throw away our copper short sword and jump over a blue slime. Straight away I find some living trees, they don't really have anything of use. I get a finch staff but I can't use it. This playthrough basically started as just a no weapon run, like I couldn't do anything from the get go. So the first order of business is to get one of any of the NPCs that actually drop a weapon. So after doing a little bit of looting, I make some houses. For the NPCs that I will need, they are very important. So I already have four NPCs. I have the demolitionist, the guide, the merchant, and the nurse, and none of them actually drop a weapon. So I made some more houses. So as I have no weapon, I just have to traverse really carefully. This is master mode, so it's kind of scary. The enemies will kill me very quick, and I can't fight back. The die trader moved in because I got some yellow marigolds, and he actually dropped a weapon I need, but I can't actually kill him yet. In hindsight, actually, I probably could have smothered him in sand to kill him, but what I wanted to do was find some lava so that I could burn him alive. Suffocation is a pretty horrible death. I may be a murderer, but I'm not a monster. I found a few houses. I managed to get a magic mirror and two flare guns. I continued to mine until I found a little pool of lava in a cave, which I filled my bucket with. I then went home, trapped the die trader inside his own house, and smothered him in lava. And he didn't drop it. Yeah, that's right. It's a chance of dropping. It's a one in eight of dropping. So I had to wait till daytime for him to spawn again. I killed him, and he didn't drop it again. But I actually learned something new by killing him. Some lava poured and accidentally destroyed a tree. If you place lava under a tree, it'll instantly break it. Who needs axes when you can just instantly break it with lava? It can be a little dangerous, but <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. So what I do is just sleep until the NPC arrived, kill him, then he didn't drop it, then sleep again, and I got the exotic scimitar. Boom. We got a pretty uh, mid weapon. It's not great, but it's something. An hour and 15 minutes into our playthrough, we have finally gotten our first weapon. I then continued to do a bunch of mining. I then killed myself with some explosives because that gold looked too tempting. And after quite a bit of mining, I have some gold armor and some tungsten armor, but still no Hermes boots. I then random teleported straight onto a sky island, which is pretty epic, but uh, it only had a star fury, so uh, useless. I can't even use it. And it was legendary just to rub it in. The traveling merchant spawned and he had absolutely nothing, literally useless, so I murdered him for stepping foot on my property and not selling me good, valuable stuff. I used a gravity potion and found a lucky horse and a celestial magnet and another star fury. I then made some houses in the desert. Now it's time to loot the underground desert. And while I was looking through the underground desert, I found a temple, which I would not have seen from the surface. And I got a sandstorm in a bottle, which is very epic. And the first chest I find in the underground desert has some dune rider boots. And there's a bar statue in the house as well, which is absolutely perfect. And now the painter moves in. He is another NPC that actually drops a weapon. I set the die trader on fire just to watch him burn. I had no particular reason. And then I put some lava beneath the painter's feet. And he actually drops his cap, which is one of the things he drops, but it's not the weapon. And then the die trader just decides to jump into lava like the idiot he is. Oh no. I put on the cap of my fallen victim. And I have a nice good night's rest, waiting for him to respawn so I can kill him once again. The traveling merchant comes. I kill him in cold blood because he doesn't sell anything I want. The painter comes back, which is his first mistake. I then accidentally drop some lava inside my house and it destroys everything. After killing the painter again and 
and then sleeping, the goblin army decides to come. So now I have to deal with these little goblins with an exotic scimitar, which is fine. It's not great. The goblins are annoying. They're not hard. I threw myself at them with my sword, and eventually the goblin army is defeated. I then went back to the grind of sleeping, killing the painter, sleeping again. And then a blood moon rises. They really don't want me to get this paintball gun. I managed to get a couple bloody tears and a couple money troughs and a shark tooth necklace, which should help with these low damage weapons. Back to the grind of killing the painter. I had to murder so many painters, which you know, it's fine, but it's more like a hassle. I don't want to kill all these people. I mean, I will. I finally get the paintball gun, which does a total of 12 damage. But luckily it shoots pretty fast. Honestly, it's a pretty good weapon, especially pre-boss. And then I feel an evil presence watching over me. So I get my buffs in order and I make a platform and this should be fine. I have a ranged weapon, I have feather fall, I have everything I need to make this fight work. The paintball gun shoots in bursts and it actually surprised me with how much damage it did. It's decent. But you know, I just had to keep my distance from the eye. I just had to shoot the paintball gun into it and it really was no issue at all. I have Cthulhu quickly gets to second phase and then starts dashing at me, but I don't think I've even been hit yet. Once he does the gamer dashes, that's when I do get hit. But you know, it's fine. Now, obviously I didn't get platinum in this world, so I can't have the most defense. I'm also not entirely prepared for this. I don't have max health or whatever. I do have a bar statue though, but even so, it's pretty simple. It's pretty easy. And the Eye of Cthulhu falls to me and I had like 230 health left. So that's the first boss defeated. And once again, I am not letting myself use this shield of Cthulhu in this playthrough. I was contemplating on whether I should use it or not at this point, but soon I decided I should do another playthrough without a shield of Cthulhu dash, which is really annoying just because it's melee damage. After finding the goblin, I made some specter boots and a horseshoe sandstorm balloon. And now it's time to loot the underground jungle. In here, I find the final life crystals I need and some extra goodies, such as the boomstick, which I will never use. And then another boomstick and some flower boots to look drippy and an anklet of the wind. It's whatever. I then made a slime crown and challenged the king slime. This boss is going to be very easy. I used a featherfall potion so that I can stay just below my platform right when he teleports so that he doesn't teleport onto my platform. And I just kind of glided down with the featherfall potion while shooting my paintball gun. And it worked wonders. I mean, this is probably one of the easiest boss fights I've ever done. I didn't really get hit at all. I also made the fly meal, which is a weapon that you can use to kill NPCs. Now it is the only other weapon I allowed myself to use, but only against NPCs so that I can murder them quicker without making a mess. I then found the shimmer to get some permanent upgrades and I accidentally filled the whole thing with water. So uh, that, I mean, that's kind of annoying. And then after some epic fishing and some bombing of the underground corruption, I then summon the eater of worlds. This boss should be pretty easy as well. These early game bosses are going to be pretty simple because the paintball gun is, I mean, it's a pretty good weapon. I can play at a range and I can just shoot things. It doesn't do a ton of damage, but you know, it, it's not that bad. It's pretty good. It's okay. It's fine. It's good. So I just kept shooting at the Eater of Worlds, chipping at its body segments. The paintball gun's bullet speed isn't insanely quick, which does make it kind of hard to hit the shots, but this boss is super simple, super easy if you do it underground because the spit isn't that prominent. And yeah, I just kept shooting my paintball gun until the Eater of Worlds was defeated. Very easy, very simple. And now I have the worm scarf, which is very poggers. Now with the nightmare pickaxe, I made my way into hell and mined some hellstone ore. I also found a guide voodoo doll very quickly. Now with a bunch of hellstone, I'm able to make hellstone armor and a molten pickaxe. I also found the tavern keep tied up underground. I killed him with the fly meal and he actually dropped the ale tosser first try. So I got some sand, made some mugs, and then made some ale. But I soon realized just how bad it is. It's, it's really bad. The paintball gun is so much better. I then decided to do the torch god in the underground jungle, which was probably a mistake, but it ended up working out after a couple tries, I actually defeated it, which means I get that torch luck from the torches. And now it's time to fight the queen bee. So I buff up and summon her, continue to use my paintball gun because my other two weapons kind of suck. With a feather fall potion and moving in the right directions and continuing to shoot her with the paintball gun, I mean, it's pretty textbook. I don't take that much damage because I have all the damage reduction I need, I have all the defense I need from molten armor and everything. So really, it's, it's not a problem. This fight is completely fine. I just continue to shoot the paintball gun until she is dead, and that's the queen bee defeated. What do I get from her? Uh, not much. Really nothing at all, to be honest. I then spawned in Deerclops. I'm actually fighting Deerclops this time around. Is there any reason I'm fighting him? No, but you know, there's a reason I don't really fight this boss. It's because he respawns after dying, so it's really not a hard fight, because you can just throw yourself at him, die, and then come back and throw yourself at him again. He is a pretty hard fight, to 
to be fair, though. My power gun really doesn't do that much damage to him, and he has 15,000 health, which is a lot. So this took a while, but I finally defeated Deerclops. And now it's time to fight Skeletron. So I sleep, and I sleep, and sleep, and I overslept. And now it's 10 p.m., and I'm still not fighting him. And I still haven't built an arena. I finish my arena real quick, and I summon Skeletron at 12 a.m. I don't know why I decided to fight him right now. I also ate the gold bunny, so I'm exquisitely stuffed for 48 minutes. And I'm also tipsy because of the ale from the ale tosser, which uh, lowers my defense. But it's not going too bad. I am shooting Skeletron's hands, as you always do, and just keeping my distance from them. It's really textbook. But really, what I'm fighting here is time. I don't have much time, and I have to do this as quick as possible, or I just wasted my buffs. But you know, this phase of Skeletron is pretty dang easy. If you have enough movement speed, feather fall potion, all that, it's very simple. The thing with the paintball gun, it's quite hard to hit things from a range. You kind of have to be close to hit lots. And eventually, Skeletron's hands are destroyed, and now it's just his skull. And there's only two hours left in the night. I started using the ale tosser a bit, and yeah, I realized how bad it is. The paintball gun does more than half the ale tosser does, and it shoots ten times faster. And it also doesn't curve as much, so it's just way better. When Skeletron does the spinning attack, it's damage city, it's easy. I don't take that much damage from Skeletron. It's about 40 per hit, which is fine. And remaining on full health basically throughout the whole fight, Skeletron has been defeated, and now I can roam the dungeon. I quickly find the mechanic bound in the dungeon. I free her. She's all like, thank you for saving me. What could I do to repay you? And then I murder her. She drops the next weapon, which is the combat wrench. She does not drop it here, though, because it's a 1 in 8. I then find a cobalt shield and a bunch of other useless crap, and eventually I find the shadow key that I was looking for. With the bones I got, I made some necro armor to make my paintball gun do as much damage as possible. I then killed the mechanic again, and I do get the combat wrench this time. I then tested it out on the Eater of Worlds. It seemed to be pretty good. It's a melee weapon that acts as a boomerang. It's not bad. It's actually decent. And I was kind of hoping it would be because it's post-Skeletron and I needed something that is going to do some damage. Although it might be a little lackluster from what I had hoped. But now it's time to create a hell bridge for the Wall of Flesh. And there is one more weapon I can actually get. The party girl has a 1 in 4 chance to drop happy grenades in stacks of 30 to 60. Which basically is just a grenade that explodes into confetti. So it's very annoying to farm, but it is another weapon. The Silas moves in who drops the final weapon I can get in pre-hard mode, the Silas Scissors. But while I'm killing them and going to sleep, a blood moon rises. Which means I can't sleep, so I just waited out a blood moon. And then while I'm sleeping to kill more NPCs, another blood moon happens. So sick of it, I just decided to fight the wall of flesh. How bad can it be? Let's actually beat this boss. You know, first try. This will be very easy. I start off with the paintball gun and some happy grenades, and then I soon realize this might be harder than I first thought. The speed at which I was killing the hungry was way too slow. They would respawn as quick as I killed them, which is a big problem because I can't actually hit the wall if there's hungry in the way. And hungry do a lot of damage. You don't want them around. So this was bad. I was trying to use the paintball gun to shoot past the hungry to get to the wall of flesh, and it really wasn't working. I couldn't get past them. I could slip a few, but it didn't really do much. I could try and get close to the wall and just tank it, but no, I can't. I will die. So this was just incredibly annoying and frustrating because I just couldn't do anything. Like, the damage is so low, I can't do anything. And I finally got to about the edge of the world, and I mean, it was already over, so I teleported home and died. So yeah, not great. So I'm gonna need more space. I'm actually going to need to create a bridge that covers the entire world. And I finally made it to the other side of the end of the world and decided to fight the wall of flesh again. Hopefully it'll go better this time. I basically just used the grenades and the paintball gun. I am out of grenades now, so I can only use the paintball gun and the combat wrench. And I just kept shooting at it, hoping to get past the hungry and do some damage. But the thing is, the boss gets faster the lower health it gets. So it's going to cover more ground and I'm just gonna die. I then went down into a hellstone house and just died. I fought it again and this time I tried to use the combat wrench as much as possible with fire flasks and everything. And after farming the party girl a lot for happy grenades, I have quite a lot of them just to try and use them and hopefully that'll be enough but I died to the hungry I summoned the wall of flesh again and died to the hungry no, this is impossible it's literally impossible I summoned the wall of flesh again this time using a combo of the combat wrench and the paintball gun and I died it's not going great ladies and gentlemen this sucks I then killed the stylist and got the stylish scissors turns out they're pretty trash though they're, they are very bad I mean they swing really quick but way too short range fought the wall of flesh again and died to the hungry at this point, I didn't even know if this was possible. I was ready 
to give up. There's no way I could even do this. But I made one upgrade to my shark tooth necklace and I made it the stinger necklace. This spawns little bees when you get hit. It's not really a weapon, so it's not against the rules. Also, they're classless, so it's not even like a class or anything. Hopefully, that little difference of the bees when I get hit will be just enough for us to win this fight. I then summoned the wall of flesh again, and hopefully we can actually freaking beat it this time. And as you can see, the hungry actually died a lot quicker. I've done a lot more damage to the wall of flesh already. I continue to use the combat wrench and the paintball gun, and I finally got the wall of flesh to under half health. I continue to use stuff like the happy grenades and the paintball gun, keeping my distance from the wall and the hungry. I'm back to full health, which is very good. He has less than 5,000 health left, and now I'm just shooting the paintball gun, hoping that it slips through and does enough damage to the wall. Now, this fight was going on for so long, I had to reapply some of my buffs, but I am actually doing damage. Like, the wall is taking enough damage here that I will be able to defeat this before I hit the end of the world, hopefully. At this point, I'm just hoping I don't mess this up. I really don't want to mess this up. I don't want to have to do this fight again. It takes forever, and all it takes is one little mistake, and it's over. And then I made a fatal mistake. I bumped into the Hellstone wall, and the wall of flesh started dragging me with him, and I died, but so did he. Oh my my gosh, let's go! Freaking <laughs> the wall of flesh has been defeated and I died at the exact same time, which was insane. I almost had to do this all again and I'm so glad I didn't have to. I got a bit careless because I was about to defeat it and it almost cost me the whole fight, but you know, I'm never punished, it's fine. Alright, before we get into hard mode, guys, I just wanted to remind you that we're trying to hit 100k, so if you could subscribe, that would mean absolutely everything to me. It is actually my 10-year anniversary on YouTube. I've been doing this for 10 years, so 100k would be an absolute dream. I've been doing this since I was a kid, 10 years now. Hey, what is going on, guys? See you here. I'd really appreciate it. Now, with that done, I headed to the Shimmer and shimmered my emblem into a Warrior emblem because I wanted to use the Combat Wrench as my main weapon. I then went to the Corruption and smashed some altars. Then I got Cobalt, turned that into a Cobalt Drill. Yes, I made a drill. It actually digs faster than a pickaxe. I know it has less range, but it digs faster than a pickaxe, so sue me. It makes mining these hard mode ores a little easier. I then got a Mithril Drill, and then with that, mined Adamantite. I got all the old school ores. Now with these crappy weapons, hard mode enemies are quite annoying to kill. I mean, when I'm in the underground corruption, these enemies are just really annoying. And they take forever to kill, but it's fine. I'll be fine. I'm fine. It's fine. I'm good. I'm all good. I then killed myself a bunch of times because I couldn't live with myself with the atrocities I had committed on these NPCs. But as a softcore player, you can't escape life that easily. I used the gravestones to buy some crimson seeds and made my artificial crimson biome. Also that I could fish up some hemo piranhas and also farm some vertebrae, which allowed me to spawn the brain. Cthulhu, which I beat pretty easily and got the Brain of Confusion. I then farmed a bunch of pixies to get some pixie wings. And I quickly killed the wyvern because the combat wrench does pierce, so he was not that hard to kill. I then made all the boss summons and spawned the twins. Now the damage was not great. I was using the combat wrench to get some cursed flames off on them, and then sometimes a paintball gun when I needed distance. This fight was taking forever. I decided to single one out, so I was singling out Spasmatism, because I thought that would make it easier. When Spasmatism is shooting his fire, I can't actually get close enough to him to do the combat wrench. But eventually, spasmatism kills me in cold blood, and I pay for my sins of my past. So the damage was just not there, so I decided to fight the destroyer instead. This was not a good idea, because the damage was very low, and I was taking too much damage, and eventually I died. Now I also got the tax collector, and with him I can get a new weapon, the classy cane. This thing is garbage. It's so bad. I don't even know why it exists. But that is the last weapon I will be able to get pre planted terror. So there's no other options here. I have to use these crap weapons to beat all the mechanical bosses and plant terror. Fight the destroyer again and get destroyed. I decided to fight the twins again and spasticism got really low but he killed me and it was past middle of the night so it really wasn't looking good at all. I challenged the twins again and this time I actually killed spasmatism but doing that last bit of damage was really hard and it took forever. By the time he was dead the night was almost over and retina Laser still had 
had so much health left. But I thought to myself, maybe it's the armor I'm wearing. I was currently wearing adamantite armor, but since it was raining, I had the thought that maybe I should use frost armor for that extra debuff and the bonus to ranged and melee damage at the same time. So while it was a blizzard in the snow, I cheesed a few golems and then mined a bunch more adamantite until I was able to make the frost armor. I then fought the wall of flesh again, and this time around, it was much easier. I then decided to fight the destroyer for some reason, even though the destroyer is immune to basically all debuff. So then I decided to fight the twins again. Will this new armor make that much of a difference? Turns out, maybe. The damage is much higher. I'm doing so much more damage to them so quickly. When spasmatism turns to second phase, he does hurt me quite a bit, and now I'm just trying to keep my distance to stay alive. But after keeping my distance from the bosses, eventually spasmatism has been killed, and Retnazer is almost half health, and there's still half the night left. So I know this is possible at this point. The armor and the new emblem has made that much of a difference. And I mean, Retnazer is not that hard. You just kind of got to kite him and make sure you're not getting hit by the lasers by going in certain directions. He does mess me up towards the end. I get down to as low as 20 health, which is very scary. But Retnazer is so low. A Matrix dodged those lasers and the twins have been defeated just like that. Not even close. Not even close. I wasn't worried for a second. That was so close, man. That was insane. Now with my shimmered adamantite into orichalcum, I'm able to make an orichalcum set. This should give enough extra damage to defeat the destroyer because the petals pierce infinitely. It spawns in a ball, so I do a bunch of damage from the start. But that's kind of a problem because that also spawns a bunch of probes. But I got hit directly with the destroyer's head, which caused me to die. After finally adding a second layer of platforms and extending my platform, I know crazy. So you get Earthbot actually preparing his arenas. But it didn't do me any favors because the destroyer soon destroyed me and also destroyed my NPCs, which uh, I can't blame him. He's doing my job for me. But since I have defeated one of the mechanical bosses, I can actually go down and get some life fruit. And with that, I can shimmer it and turn it into an Aegis fruit. And now I'm ready to fight the destroyer again. I feel vibrations from deep below. So it's going to be a free summon, but I realize I can't really wait for it because I have a limited time frame with this boss and I need to summon it as soon as possible. But I'm mainly using the combat wrench just because it has the piercing ability and just hoping that the petals from the orichalcum armor do enough damage to the destroyer. And it's not going too bad. I've got the destroyer under half health with more than half the night remaining, which is a good sign, but I do get pretty low. I get down to the under 200. But I get a heal up and I'm looking a bit more healthy. I continue to attack the destroyer and making sure that I take out the probes just so that I don't get overwhelmed with lasers and everything and so that I get those hearts I can pick up. Now, I actually fought this on a full moon and with rain. So I had werewolves attacking me and nimbuses, which was incredibly annoying. But even with all that, I actually ended up defeating the destroyer. That was incredibly difficult and I never want to do that again. Now the hard mode goblin army spawns and I have to take out the goblin warlocks, which is pretty annoying, but eventually they are defeated. And now it's time to fight Skeletron Prime, the final mechanical boss. For this boss, I'm just gonna use the paintball gun, keep my distance, use the frost armor to get the frost burn effect and also use the combat wrench every now and then to get the cursed flames debuff on him with the flask. Now, I just have to defeat this boss in the time frame I have. I have to beat it before daytime, which is difficult because he has 53,000 health. Now, I wasn't necessarily targeting the hands. I kind of just wanted his head to be destroyed. But Skeletron Prime is incredibly low now. And just like that, he has been defeated. And the jungle grows restless. And then the pirates spawned. There is absolutely nothing I could want from this. Maybe a discount card. So I just waited the pirates out until they finally died. Then I actually challenged the Flying Dutchman, which was a mistake because it was taking absolutely forever. Like, the cannons can't be inflicted with debuffs, so I couldn't even use that to do damage. I was just very slowly chipping at the cannons. But I started to get a rhythm on it. I wasn't really getting hit much at all. And eventually, I actually defeated the Flying Dutchman and dropped a discount card and a lucky coin. And now it's time to just go down into the jungle, farm chlorophyte, and life fruit. And then then another pirate invasion happens. Just what I wanted. After dealing with them, I then go back to the jungle to finish up my final bits of harvesting. After getting full health with life fruit, I then headed to hell to farm some red devils for a fire feather so that I could make some new flame wings. And I also made a fire gauntlet. And now I started to make an arena for Plantera in the underground jungle. Now I'm all ready to fight Plantera. So I break the Plantera's bulb inside the arena and summon her. I start off by mainly using the combat wrench as my main weapon 
weapon. And then I quickly switched to the paintball gun as well for that range damage. Now, the damage to Plantera is quite slow. I'm not doing much at all. I'm not really doing anything to her. It's chipping away, but, you know, <laughs> this is nothing. But in these challenge runs, that's kind of just what I have to deal with. I've gotten very accustomed to doing basically no freaking damage. So, as per usual with Plantera, I just circle around her and she can't hit me in first phase. I make sure to hit her with the combat wrench to get the Cursed Flames debuff on her. Now, maybe I should have went Crimson just for Icor. It might have been better. The defense drop on such low damaging weapons might have been better, to be honest. They did buff Cursed Flames, so I don't know. But eventually, Plantera gets down to second phase, and that's when the circling strategy kind of flies out the window. Now, I just need to keep my distance, which is fine because I prepared for that and I made a very big arena for her. Now, this boss fight was taking so long that my buffs ran out, and I didn't actually realize, so I didn't reapply my buffs, but it it was fine. I mean, I'm on full health. I'm not taking any damage. This boss fight is actually pretty dang easy. This shows how easy Plantera can be if you just have the arena space and you move in the right ways. I didn't even need a dash for this. And after a long five minutes of fighting Plantera, she finally fell to me. And that's big news because now we can finally get a new weapon. But before we do that, I need to get every single NPC that exists in my world. So I make a surface glowing mushroom biome for the truffle. And now we have every single NPC in our world. And finally, the princess arrives. And after killing the princess many, many times, I finally got the resonance scepter. And because this weapon is a magic weapon, I had to make a switch to mage all of a sudden. So I made a celestial emblem. Now it is so nice to have a weapon that actually does freaking damage. I went and fought the wall of flesh and I destroyed it so quickly. You don't understand how it felt to use a weapon that freaking did something. Like this weapon is not bad. It's actually something I can use. I then went to the post plantera dungeon. There are only three things I could possibly want here. Ectoplasm, a tabby, and a black belt. And I quickly got just that. So I was able to make a full set of spectre armor with both helmets and master ninja gear. Now I got both helmets so that I can switch to the hood anytime I need a lifesteal. Now fully maged up, I am ready to head to the lizard temple, clear out all the traps, and challenge the golem. Will golem be difficult this time around? I mean, not really, but the Resonance Scepter isn't actually amazing compared to other weapons, but it, it's not bad. It's actually doing quite a bit of damage. Its circle attacks anything in the circle that hits the circle, so it can hit its hands and body at the same time. Now, the Resonance Scepter actually uses quite a bit of mana, so I do have to be cautious about my mana. I don't like using the Mana Flower because I just, I think it's cringe. I think it's a waste of an accessory slot. I'd rather be conscious about drinking the Mana Potions than to waste an entire accessory slot. And just like that, the golem has been defeated. Uh, who's surprised? I mean, it's it's the golem. It's easy. And I fought the golem a bunch more times in the hopes of getting the eye of the golem, which I eventually got, which allowed me to make the destroyer emblem. I then decided to fight the queen slime. I, I'll, I'll go back and fight it now. Uh, <laughs> now that I have a weapon that actually does damage, I didn't want to fight this boss because it wasn't mandatory. I wasn't going to fight it because it wouldn't drop anything for me except maybe crystal assassin armor, but that wouldn't have done anything for me. It would have dropped the mount. That's a about it. But with the Resonance Scepter, she got absolutely smoked. It, it was nothing. I bought some steampunk wings and decided I'm gonna fight Duke Fishron now. Now, my DPS isn't amazing. I'm doing about 1,000 to 2,000 damage per second, which it's not bad, but it's not great. I, it could be much worse. I'll, I'll take it. Now, having a dash against Duke Fishron makes a massive difference. He is way harder without a dash, so having Master Ninja Gear makes this pretty textbook. I just dash whenever he dashes at me. It's very simple. He gets the second phase, but still no problem. The only problem will be third phase. And once he gets to third phase, I dash straight into a water tornado, which messes me up. And then I'm scrambling a bit. I'm just barely alive on the skin of my teeth. And then I dash straight into Duke Fishron. But we almost killed him. So I summon him again. And this time around, I actually killed him with only about 100 health remaining. And I got the Fishron wings straight away. That's freaking epic because the fish run wings slap and that's just about the only drop I ever would have wanted from him and now I farm some prismatic lace wings so that I can fight the Empress of Light now, I mean this boss should be fine Empress of Light is pretty easy for me I know her attack patterns and everything I just have to lead my resonance scepter so that she goes into it which is no issue the damage isn't amazing but as I said it could be worse but after just hitting her with the resonance scepter she eventually gets the second phase but this is just more of the same stuff basically second phase is a little more hectic but it's completely fine. Empress of 
fight is super simple. This fight is a lot harder without the Soaring Insignia, obviously. But just like that, the Empress Elite has been defeated with quite a lot of my health left. And I got the Empress Wings. What is with this playthrough and the bosses dropping the wings on the first treasure bag? Now, I probably prefer the Empress Wings because of the fast ascent time. And with the Soaring Insignia, it pairs perfectly. Now, there's not much else to do but to fight the Lunatic Cultist. Now, the Resonance Scepter actually kind of shreds him because he's in the one spot. He doesn't move, so it lingers and it does a lot of damage. So with the Soaring Insignia, I'm just flying forever, shooting the Resonance Scepter right at the Lunatic Cultist. Spectre Armor's doing extra damage to him. I'm doing like 3,000 damage per second, making sure not to hit him when he has the duplicates. And the Lunatic Cultist has been defeated. Now it's time for the Lunar Pillars. So the Stardust Pillar lands right on me. So I decided to just do that one first. I really don't have a preference because none of the fragments are going to do anything for me. I'm not going to make any of the weapons. I farm some starter cells until the pillar's barrier drops and the pillar has been defeated. I then went to do the solar pillar, which I decided to cheese because uh, I'm cringe like that. But unfortunately, the resonance scepter doesn't work through it. It doesn't actually go through the wall. But if they're pressed up against it, then they actually take damage from it. So that's what I did until finally the shield was down and I could kill the solar pillar. Next, I did the nebula pillar and there's no cheesing this. I just gotta fight it head on. But thing is, I do have the Spectre Hood, so I am able to life steal off of them if I need it. But even so, I do die a couple times before the pillar barrier drops, but eventually it drops and the Nebula Pillar has been defeated. And now the final one is the Vortex Pillar. And this one was really no issue. The Resonance Scepter just kind of destroyed them, and the barrier drops, and I defeat the Vortex Pillar. And now it's time to fight the Moon Lord. I make some super healing potions and prepare for impending doom. The Moon Lord spawns, I get some top eye damage in, and then start working the other hand. Now my strategy here is basically the same as normal. I'm using Soren Insignia and Master Ninja Gear to keep my distance from him, and shooting my Resonance Scepter, leading it so that it goes into his eyes. Now it's not doing terrible damage. This is a post Terror weapon, pre-Golem weapon. It's quite underleveled at this stage, but it's not too bad. Is he taking lots of damage? No, but getting there. But I made a fatal mistake. I hit the Sky Limit right as the Death laser came out and I got obliterated. So let's try that again. It starts off kind of bad. I get hit pretty low. I'm down to about half health, but I get a heal off and then dodge the death laser and hit the top eye. And that's basically what I needed to do was just keep attacking the eyes. As soon as the top eye open, do as much damage to it as possible and keep my distance. That's the most important thing. Keep my distance. Make sure that he's not doing damage to me. The projectiles when they're spread out are much easier to dodge. And this time around, I'm making sure to keep myself lower to the ground so that I don't hit the sky limit again and die. And eventually, after lots of resonance scepter shots and quite a few death laser dodges, the top eye has been destroyed. I then start working the left hand eye until it is destroyed and then I go to the right eye. Luckily, they were pretty close to being destroyed, so that was no problem. And now it's just the core with the true eye of Cthulhu's attacking me. Once the core is out, it's basically just textbook. If you just keep running away from the Moon Lord and fire back at him, it's like no issue at all. And luckily, the Resonance Scepter has a lot of range and his core goes into my shot. So I just kept that up, kept keeping my distance from the Moon Lord till eventually he got so low that I just went close to him just to finish him off because I was full health anyway. And just like that, the Moon Lord has been defeated and we are the victors of NPC drops only, Master Mode Terraria. But we're not done yet. There's one more challenge I want to do. Now I want to fight Daytime Empress Alight with only a Resonance Scepter. Now I'm going to use Spectre Armor. I'm not going to use nebula armor. I'm just going to do it with spectre armor and a celestial starboard. So with the movement of celestial starboard, I'm able to dodge all the attacks. Eventually, I do die to an ethereal lance. I then got it down to 21,000 health until she killed me. So we're getting pretty close. This is definitely possible. And after several more deaths, I finally started to get a flow on her. I knew just how to move to dodge her attacks and make sure that they don't collide with me. The damage is not quite there. This fight does take quite a while. 
while. I'm only doing like 2,000 damage per second at most. And eventually, kind of on the skin of my teeth, I get it to second phase. Now, the absolute precision of the Celestial Starboard did help a lot here. I'm able to just really duck and weave where I need to. And just like that, the Daytime Empress of Light has been defeated with only a Resonance Scepter. GG, ladies and gentlemen. And to commemorate such an achievement, I decided to make a Hall of Fame of all the NPC drops that you can get, including cosmetics. But there was one that I didn't quite get yet, and it was the Ivy from the Steampunker. It's dropped from the Steampunker if her name is Whitney, which she just wasn't spawning with that name. Cynthia, this is for the Garchomp. But finally, Whitney the Steampunker spawned, and I got the final drop and put them all on display. And there you have it, Terraria Master Mode with only NPC drops. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, subscribe down below. It'd mean the world to me, and I hope you guys have a fantastic day.